So I need to do some organization. Like, really badly. Like, really, really, really badly. Like, really, 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 really badly. And now, I was torn between doing the next video, which is this ride here, or doing some organization and cleaning up. And I was like, why can't organization and cleaning up be the next video? I've got so many questions from you guys about this, that, and the other. Like, how to store kits when you've got a big collection, to do a collection tour. Where's this kit? Where's that kit? Where's the other, etc. Then I'm like, well, maybe I can actually go through some of this stuff and kill two birds with the one stone. So that's exactly what we're gonna do today. So yeah, this right here is just the review room, basically where I do all the reviewing and stuff, usually on this table right here. And I was just setting this up to do the next review, which is the Kyrios right here, which is continuing on with the high grade double O kits that I've been reviewing lately, like the Junimas right there, the Exia. That is not one of them. There are the rest of the ones that are just waiting to be built right here. But yeah, I was just trying to clean up a little bit and get some of this stuff kind of organized. And I realized this is going to take me a whole lot longer than I thought it would, especially because I've got tons of kits, not just in here, but out in the garage as well, that needs some major, major sorting. So we're just hanging out on the ground like that. Basically, I spent, or should I say spend, so much time on kind of making the Gunpla content that I don't really do much in the lines of actually organizing it properly afterwards. And I kind of want to get these shelves all filled up with kits as opposed to just the random detritus that's on them at the moment. This is just storage and not even meant to be storing them here. I just leave them here because if I put these somewhere I can't see them, I'll forget they exist whatsoever. Like this one right here. This. This is one of the kits that I put off because, you know, non-Gundam kits don't really do that well, even though this looks awesome. And all these like non-Gundam high grades that Bandai have been releasing lately are absolutely killer. But yeah, let's get to some sorting and I'll tell you why. This perfect grade right here is an absolute piece. So yeah, one of the main reasons that I actually thought about doing this was because I needed to organize this box right here, which I took a kit out of very, very recently. So a lot of my kits just knocking around inside of boxes like this. So I don't normally store them like this. This was for transport and they, they, well, they got a little bit rattled around the place. So I need to put them back together. These were not stored that great. I think I just ran out of storage space for them. So they just started getting packed into boxes. There was paper and stuff inside of it as well, packing them as well as those kind of plastic cushiony kind of things, but they still got rattled. I guess there's not really much you can do when someone else is gonna be handling your crap, but either way, fixing time. So yeah, if there's any one bit of advice I'd give for storing your kits anyways, always take off the V-fin or the blade antenna while you're actually storing them. Whether it's for transport or just for general storage, these are the things that break the most often. So that's why I tend to keep them separated. Sometimes I'll actually tape them with a bit of masking tape or something like that to the underside of a shield. Something with a lot of strength so that they won't get broken. Thankfully they didn't. Nothing is actually broken. It's just some parts just got rattled apart in transit. But yeah, I should probably take a opportunity to do a little bit of dusting. I'll underline the probably because I'm not gonna do it. Last place I lived in was an absolute shithole. So it means that everything was just constantly, constantly just covered in dust. How did I have you attached to this? This way? Flying forward a bit? I don't remember. So anyway, there is the perfect grade, perfect strike, pretty much put back together. As far as I know, everything is where it should be. It needs definitely a bit of a dusting, but I'll get around to that some other day. At least that's what I keep on telling myself. Now it's time to get the Penelope re-put back together. Anyway, as of right now, most of my big-ish strike things, or at least two of the big-ish strike things, strike, I mean seed things, I have so far have been going up on this shelf here so he fits so he can wait up there for the time being. Now back to this Penelope.
All right, there, it's put back together. What can I say? This is an absolutely phenomenal, yet simultaneously nonsense kit right here. This took so long to put back together. I mean, so long. I thought this would take less time than a perfect grade, but no, it just loves to fall apart and fall apart and fall apart again. Whew, this one, it's, it's not put together exactly right, but it's good enough. I need something for size comparisons. This will be it. So, well, maybe I'll readjust it later. On to the next thing. Okay, so I need to put some kits into storage right now. One of the questions you guys ask me a lot is, how do I actually store my kits? For example, if your collection's getting a little too big, you don't have enough shelf space. Well, what I do is what I'm about to tell you right now. I get just some Ziploc bags. I store them inside of this thing right here. Just pull them out. I'd like to keep them a little neater than that, but that's as neat as they're ever gonna be. This thing is awesome, by the way. This is called the Studio Design Cube X, I think it's called. I just use it during my reviews. It's like a little cart. I just keep it beside me the whole time. These can slide out like so. I've got some action bases in there. Different rotating bases in here. Get in there properly. And I've got some more action bases down here. Usually I keep lenses and stuff on the side as well. It's very, 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 very handy. And I prop things up top when I'm painting them. But uh, yes, I just grab a Ziploc bag just like so. I just pop the old name on here just to remember what it is. Because if you've got a lot of things, it's easy to kind of forget what it is. So SMP Chain Saw Man. That is it. Basically... You know, you can forget what model kit line or whatever like that it is if you've got quite a few things. So I just open it up, pop in the chainsaw man like so. Make sure to kind of align everything so it's kind of like flat in one plane so you're less likely to break anything. And then I just use kind of crates like this right here. They're just really handy. They're water resistant. My garage isn't necessarily all that dry so it means it kind of keeps them from going funky, even the boxes. I keep boxes usually from something like Master Grades or something large enough, like what you're seeing right here. Uh, that's a unbuilt Gunpla Coon. Just, yeah, larger boxes I keep for basically inserting stuff like this right here into. If it's kind of small like this, I might put it inside another box, inside of this box, and just kind of keep it up like that. So just for the sake of example, these are things I reviewed fairly recently. I just keep their accessories or the actual kit itself inside of the box. And then I'll just put them inside of the master grade or high grade box, depending on how breakable they are. Put them in a high grade box if they're super breakable. If they're not super breakable, they can just all pop in here. Uh, these aren't gonna stay in here, by the way, because there's no organization to them. I have to organize them right. They need to be series with series or I will absolutely lose the plot because, well, I'll never ever find them again. Then I just pop the top of the lid. And uh, just like so, I'll probably label it with whatever is inside of the box and then I'll put it inside one of these containers like so and it'll just be kind of stacked up, layered up and probably lay well, label the side with something. None of these are labeled because as of right now, they're not really being used for anything. Transport, I guess. So my overall plan for these shelves over here is not just a whole bunch of storage. It's kind of just happened over the last couple of months. A lot of things just got slotted in here just to keep them out of the way. But I kind of want to keep anything that's like above the bottom two for actual nice kits like I would have had before. Maybe master grades or something like that. Again, I don't have as much storage space as I would like. I'd love to have every single one of my kits just displayed so I can have like a whole section dedicated to say you see, a whole section dedicated to seed. Iron-Blooded Orphans, G-Witch, etc. Right now I have all the G-Witch kits up here, the high grade, so I can just grab them for reviews. But once G-Witch is over, they're gonna have to be replaced with the next series that's going, so I have them handy. A lot of these things here have just, well, they've kind of been shelved because they don't do as well video-wise, so yeah, it's just random. There's a Master Sword right here, just like hanging around. There's a bunch of screwdrivers. I've got a lint roller there. This is absolutely completely random oh it's even more random since i touched it i mean i've got a battery i've got an oz pin i've got this little bag of absolutely awesome little accessories right here i've just kind of been leaving them somewhere in sight so i don't forget that i do want to do something with them these are those little accessories you only get during campaigns in japan for example during the summer usually they'll have kits 
with kind of special little things. This one was from 2018. You buy a kit and you get one of these as random with it. And then it's some kind of weapon you can actually use to customize. I just buy them off of buy every now and then when I'm making an order. For example, if I want to make an order for like 100 euro or something like that. And I've gotten to about 80. These can like pack in a box. A lot of, sh well, stores still kind of stock them till today. And that way you can kind of just even out the amount. That's pretty much it. Now I need both hands to put them back in. So yeah, I've been just leaving these hanging out where I can see them because if I put them into something like a drawer like that right there, which probably has nothing in it, yeah, I'll forget they exist whatsoever and they might as well have never existed in the first place. I'll totally forget. That's why everything's kind of really nastily just hanging about like so. So the next question I get asked a lot is what do I do with my Gunpla boxes? Now, just, well, an F, well, a warning, a disclaimer, a trigger warning. If you like your Gunpla boxes, well, you mightn't like what's going to happen here. What I literally do is I just, well, I just disassemble them just like so. Like that right there. And then I pop them right into the recycling bin. Now there's some boxes that, like I mentioned, I do hold onto for storage, especially ones that have really nice box art. Some of them I'd actually keep the box art before, but I never actually did anything with them. And way back when I just used to keep all of the boxes, but like this is full boxes just hanging out here. Imagine if I kept every single box, like even when I just started getting into Gunpla, it became a lot of buildup really quickly. Same goes with manuals. Any manual I've, well, used already, besides kits that are ridiculously complex, they go into the recycling as well. Thankfully, Bandai is going to actually be putting all of their manuals online soon, which is really handy because actually holding on to them is a lot of clutter. And if you need them in future, they will be there. I saw it mentioned somewhere, I think, on the Bandai website. Ah, I just realized something right here. I didn't realize I actually kept one of these under my review desk. So this is the size of box I normally use. So it's, uh, what does it say that it is? 120 liters. And there's just a load of high grade boxes inside of each of those boxes. Usually I'll keep the kits inside of. As far as I know, these are from G Witch. So these are empty as of right now. I just sometimes use them in the videos. And also those box, uh, box, can't even say it. Those box arts are astounding so i'll just pop you there for now not very neat but it'll do also something i don't really mention all that often but my original plastic addiction is this right here warhammer 40,000. i've been collecting warhammer 40,000 for who it must be a good 25 years if not more so this is something i do try to spend a lot of time on but i don't really get as much time to spend on it as possible and if i'm not mistaken this is just another Empty box, taken up space. Ooh, transfers, transfers, go in the transfer drawer. Transfer drawer is probably this one for now. Yeah. I love these, these box dividers they have with the art on them. I wish they didn't kind of get so dinged up during shipping because they would make great frameable arts. They're really, really cool. I'm maybe gonna hold on to that. I shouldn't, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold on to that and keep more stuff that's gonna clutter the place up. And this is the ultimate pile of unsorted shame. So I definitely need to get to sorting this out. Basically, I moved everything in here. This is eventually, eventually going to be the workshop come build space. But as it stands right now, it's almost pretty much like a derelict. You can basically see straight outside. So eventually it will be, but as for right now, I just need to get it sorted. Just want to get all the gun plant is something that's a little bit more waterproof and a little bit more organized so I can actually run out, 
grab something and use it for a review when and if I need it. So right now I'm just going to be getting some stuff into a box. So, so getting back to that question that a lot of you guys do ask, and that is how do I store the Gundam kits that aren't being displayed, the ones that I don't have shelf space for? So it's pretty simple. I grab one of these 120 liter boxes like this one right here. I take a master grade box, lay it down the bottom. The box I'm gonna be sorting out right now is basically all the kits that would have been up on the Kallax IKEA shelf back in the last place I was making videos in. What seems to be in here, and it's a bit of a mystery, I didn't know on opening it up, seems to be Master Grade Wing Kits as well as Master Grade Universal Century Kits. So I'm going to label this box eventually Universal Century Gundam style, maybe by the looks of what we've got here, if not Federation style kits. So I lay the Master Grade box in the bottom and then I'll just pop in a layer of the kits. Depending on if, if they're high grades, I don't mind layering them about too deep. But if they're Master Grades, I don't like layering more than one kit at a time. Maybe some accessories or something on top, but only if they're light. And make sure that when the lid of the box goes back on like this, that there is no pressure on any of the kits. They're just laying in there, the box not gonna be rattled around. They're just gonna be safe and sound and not get busted to pieces. Then I just throw in another box just like so and start popping in and in and in. And then just keep on filling these boxes, labeling them. And that is the plan from here on out. I've got some done, not so many, but uh, anyway, let's continue. Next up in here is the Master Grade Sazabi Verka. This is a kit that you ask, guys ask also, by the way, this is gonna be a UC box. So I'm just putting him in here just to keep him out of the way for now. But a lot of you guys ask when and if I'll review that. And I do have one inside of one of these boxes that is unbuilt. I barely remember making that. I don't remember at all. So it means I couldn't actually review it at this stage. I'd just be guessing what's going on with it. So yeah. As for when and if I'm going to be doing that, it's definitely a yes. The if is a yes. The when may be soon-ish. Depends on if I find it today. All right, so that's one box emptied out. So this mightn't be as hard as I thought. All right, the next box, and this one says off the shelf, real grade and high grade. So as you can assume, like everything so far, I don't have an absolute notion of what's ooh, inside of it. These ones are almost kind of mystery-like. So I did wrap them in kitchen towel as well to try and give them a little bit extra like defense against the beatings. So uh, let's find out what these are. Okay, so mystery bag the first. At least I can remove the kitchen towel so I'll be able to see what I need to put it into. It came with an action base. I almost feel like I'm going to steal this just to kind of have lying around because, you know, you can never have enough action bases. I see some blue. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah, that's going right on back in. In case you're wondering, it's the real grade perfectibility. Now, that one, that one needs to be saved stats. So that's going right onto the shelves inside. All right, what do we have next in here? This can't really be much at all. It's very, 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 very tiny. So what we've got in here is, ah, the real grade crossbone Gundam. So that is going to go into the real grade box where the real grades are kept. So yeah, I will mention the sun is going down and getting a little bit nervous because of that right there. That is a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little wasp nest by two so hopefully they won't be returning home i hope they're abandoned <laughs> So going through this box, and this is exactly what it said in the box, this is some shelf high grades and real grades, aka the ones that I would have had on my shelves back 
when I was doing reviews in the last place. So that's exactly what they were. So there is no sorting in here. A lot of really good real grade kits because they were kept on my shelf. Real grade Sinanju, Crossbow, New Gundam, Tall Geese. There's a ton of really nice kits in here. So the way I'm actually storing these is once again in the master grade box for now, I'm gonna pop it into a smaller crate. These are all inflated with the air, with the air, the air, the air, the air, 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 air. So that means, you know, any impact won't actually bother those. I do have a crate of real grades somewhere. So hopefully they'll be able to fit in with those. Pretty good. And the other kits that were in here is a bunch of other high grade kits that I had customized to some degree before. The these need to be stored somewhere better. Maybe I'll have a shelf of those sort of kits eventually. But for now, they don't have a home, so I'll have to think of somewhere to pop those. All right, another box, and this one's labeled PG Double O Xia Natingle. <laughs> Natingle? Natingle, Natingle. I don't know what a Natingle is. Man, seriously, who let me label these boxes? I suppose me. I let me label these boxes. I don't know what it is. N T G L E. Natingle. Natingle Xia. Antigo Nightingale. Aha. Uh -huh. I guess before I even opened it. All right, you need to get it back on the top shelf where you belong. So yeah, just paper. Look like you might take a little bit of a wallop on the side of the head. Anyway, let's get you out and resuscitate. All right. Um, it's the most interestingly packed anything I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's get the tingle out first. All right, looking a little bit twisted. Drop a couple of pieces, but nothing critical. Let's get them out of there. <laughs> this is pretty hilarious. <laughs> so, so, my mindset here was that the tape on him here would stop him from rattling around, and the same with this guy here. It did actually work out. Man, rough times. Moving up. But anyway, let's get them put together. So yeah, putting the oil and the tingle back together was pretty simple. Even though it might look like a mess, the packing might look like it's ridiculous and absolutely asinine. There is a method to the madness. That's why nothing ever gets broken when I pack them. They may be packed in a zany, silly kind of way, but it's to make sure nothing has gotten broken. Basically, I've done this quite a few times, more times than I'd care to admit at this point, having to move a fairly large collection and running out of like materials halfway through. The amount of packing materials you need is nuts. But yeah, Nightingale, Natingle, absolutely perfect. Not a scratch on them. So next step in here is Gundam 00. And once again, these have held up really well. I actually packed them better than I expected. So I'd taken off the big weapons and the V-Fin as well. The V-Fin I packed in a separate little Ziploc bag to make sure it didn't get broke or go missing. It had nothing that could move around and hit it. So when I actually got it back on, not a knock off it at all. This is a very, very, very delicate V-Fin right here, especially the yellow part. I have the Trans Am version of the 00 riser and that broke almost instantly on me. So that was packed well. Next up then was the XA, and even though this looked like it was ridiculously packed in there, it turned out perfectly. Uh, the parts I thought were knocked off the side of the head, I actually intentionally had removed, and they were also in the bag as well. So that does mean I just didn't want those to get broke, so they're easy to pop back on. The only thing that actually fell off in transit, it seems, was one of the toe caps, but otherwise... Oh, is missing one part here, and I had it two seconds ago. What did I do with it? How did I misplace that? Where did I stick it? Did I push it back when I moved it? Ah, there it is. Just get that back on there and Exia will be absolutely beautiful. Besides the fact that this is caked in a massive, massive layer of dust, but one dusting later and this should be perfect. On to the next box. And this one right here says on the side of it, office shelf stuff. So as vague as vague can be. Looks like I opened this up before and ooh man, yeah. This is just random as all hell. So yeah, I remember this is when I basically just had to get the shelves emptied out and emptied out quick. Gore Gundam. So yeah, this is a lot of stuff that has no sorting to it at all. There's some build divers in here, build fighters. It looks like an NX Edge narrative Apex? Ooh, the Optimus Prime Azaku. Yeah, this is gonna... This one's gonna have to wait till I've got everything set up so I can pick one, put it in the labeled box, pick another, put it in the labeled box. So yeah, that's probably why this one was open before and uh, not opened again yet. Throw a good old label on this one off. Sort me last. All right, this one says P 
PG Uni Shelf HG. So I assume this is a perfect grade unicorn, as well as some high grades that would have been knocking around on my office shelves. So let's see, is that the case? Seems to be. And it was at that point that my phone outright died. So this was pretty much the end of what I was actually able to get done that day. So I was planning to sort my entire collection, which is usually the mindset I go into things with, but usually as well, they don't tend to work out. So yeah, I only scratched the surface. It's gonna take me a while. I did get the perfect grade unicorn out. This is it right here up on a shelf. A lot of the things I did take out, some of which are onto shelves, some of which are just getting sorted into a better kind of index based sorting kind of thing but it does seem like it's going to take me a lot of attempts to do this so i'm going to make more of these videos it gives me an opportunity to actually get through the stuff that i need to do i do want to do up this particular garage right here to actually become an absolutely awesome display as well as somewhere to actually customize paint etc have more displays backdrops etc to make videos a little bit more interesting anyway if you did like this video hit that like button so i can know that you would like to see more of me sorting out this absolute nightmare. Anyway, well, it's a dream at the same time. Anyways, I will thank you so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla content, and I will see you next time.